I mean, first of all, all the banks got a big benefit from the Fed raising rates. The last 50 basis points, not so much. Now that the Fed has stopped raising rates, again, you're going to see some challenges on the margin. Secondly, how do you grow loans if your balance sheet is capped, right? The Federal Reserve has said you guys can't get any bigger. So, again, that's a real challenge here. So I think their hands are a little bit tied behind their backs. And then, of course, you have the strategy side. Who's going to run this company? What moves are they going to make? You don't ha have a buy on I, I, Wells. I'm not, yeah, I'm not And involved. there was no, it was interesting, after they said this, and they all cited all macro factors, they cited rates, they cited the yield curve, they cited competition, J.P. Morgan shares didn't budge. So everybody seems to think this is a well-specific issue. Are you pleased with what J.P. Morgan said otherwise? Well, look, J.P. Morgan, you know, I, I have to say it. I mean, they are the best bank in the United States. I mean, they absolutely, a very nice, clean quarter. Um, you know, the capital markets did decently well. And, and really, you know, Jamie's optimism when he talks about the future going forward is, you know, made everybody calm down a little bit. The other thing that we had in the bank stocks is that big move in the Treasury. When I was here two weeks ago, we had this big drop in Treasury rates, bank stocks all got sold. Today, the macro guys all got to go, oh, let's cover our shorts and let's go buy these again. So this is both earnings and that macro trade That's going a great on. point. And, Wilf, do you think Wells is being unfairly punished for its commentary, which, again, talked a lot about the macro environment, or are investors just saying, look, you still have a lot of catching up to do? I don't think unfairly punished uh, at all, Kelly. And in fact, speaking to a couple of the analysts, they're outright angry with Wells Fargo. Their guidance was only issued in January and reiterated just a few weeks ago on the call they had after the announcement of uh, Tim Sloan's decision to retire. So people are pretty surprised by this uh, cut in net interest income guidance. And as you said, it's macro factors, but they're dealing with the same yield curve as all of the other banks. Uh, and at the top, you said it's a tale of, of two stocks. It's not really. It's a tale of Wells Fargo and the rest because PNC was much the same as JP Morgan, a decent beat across the board, reiterating guidance. And, and that's why you see all of the banks rising apart from Wells Fargo, which is falling. That's a great point. So, Anton, uh, PNC, some of the other regional banks, we're going to get more results next week. Um, you've said before you like how some of the regionals are positioned. What about when we start to turn our attention to the Goldman's, to the Morgan Stanley's, the investment banks? I mean, are you interested there? Well, I think the bar has been raised. You know, J.P. Morgan did it again. And, you know, I, I think when they have to report next week, it may not be about what's looking back, maybe about what's looking forward. And J.P. Morgan did talk about how this, this quarter is starting off much, much stronger. And I, I think people will look past any, anything that happens in the past. But, however, all those stocks are up again today. So, right. you know, could they disappoint next week? Yes. But I think if the quarter continues as is, we get all these IPOs, the world economy does better, we get a trade deal. Right. Huh, we Should get the trade be. deal. You know, yeah, you want to own these.